So welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Sir, first of all, let's talk about the fundamental human rights, the 1999 Constitution. Let's just um, delve into it and see how it really works for the people. Uh, we have a very robust uh, provisions for the fundamental human rights of Nigeria, adequately captured under Chapter 4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. And I'm talking of uh, the provisions starting from Section 33 up to Section 45. Uh, in all of these provisions, you have very robust, ample uh, rights that are near to the Nigerian people by reason of their humanity, fundamental human rights. Uh, these rights are not just guaranteed, they are protected by the Constitution. And um, if I must inform you to underscore the preeminence of these provisions is to also note that the amendment requirements for the change of any of those provisions is by far more than what it takes to amend other sections of the Constitution. So it is fundamental, it is guaranteed and entrenched. Now let's go back to the Constitution. Section 33 of the 1999 Constitution talks about right to life. Now at what point can that right to life be deprived? Some of these provisions of the Constitution, some of these rights can be derogated from. That's the language of the law, Section 45. And Section 33, dealing with the right to life, is one of those rights that can be derogated from. Uh, you also have something like the right to peaceful assembly, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, if a convict is sentenced, mark my words, there are different things. You are convicted at the conclusion of a case. You are sentenced pursuant to that conviction. Indeed, in, in crimes, other crimes like South Africa, sentencing is a different procedure. You saw what happened in Oscar Pretoria's case. Now, once you are sentenced to death, either by hanging or whatever means, it will mean that your right to life can be derogated from legitimately. In other words, the state can execute you, can take away that your right to life, of course, pursuant to the orders of court. Once you are uh, in a legitimate confinement of the Nigerian prisons, and you make attempts, you make attempts to escape lawful detention, the police is expected uh, that the police or the, the prison uh, officers, law enforcement officers, is expected to apprehend you. They are not expected to take away that your right to life simply because you're just walking away and they can easily apprehend you. But where, the, where you make it impossible for them to apprehend you and return you back to that prison to face trial, they are permitted under the law, to take away that life. Now, let's talk about Section 34 that talks about the dignity of Human persons. persons. Much as we are not there yet, the incidence of violation of that particular uh, aspect of the right has reduced. And, and this reminds me of the recent release of the CIA report from, 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 yes, the, from, from, from the United yes. States. Yes. Um, the maturity in that case is that the U.S. has shown to be above board by at least accepting, releasing it. It could have been concealed up to now and accepting that it was wrong. What that presupposes is that we got it wrong. Having made it public, we have the intention not to repeat it. The implication and the backslash is a different, it's a different, it's a different ball game. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think it is important for us to understand that as a third world country, as a developing democracy. We lack capacities 
in several aspects of our criminal justice system. Because the constituted authorities or agencies, particularly the law enforcement agencies that, ha that have prosecutorial powers, that is, the powers to prosecute offenders, do not have as much sophisticated means of apprehending and nipping crime in the, in the, in the board, uh, and let alone, you know, prosecuting it. What they do is to spread the dragnet, and then rather than fish out the actual culprits, they gather as many people as possible so that those who are able to rationalize what they were doing there at that time goes free, and those who cannot, even if they knew nothing about the offense, go in. Let's talk about education and the right to have, to be educated. Now, it's really not entrenched in the Constitution, and the education is a foundation and a catalyst to the development of the human person. Why do you think education is not in the forefront of being entrenched in the Constitution? Uh, we have dealt with the Chapter 4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, which deals with the fundamental rights of every Nigerian. Before Chapter 4, you have Chapter 2. Chapter 2 speaks to the fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policies. These are exhortations. They, are the, they represent the ambition of the states that would like to be a state in which every person will have shelter, education, health care, and other social amenities that will promote uh, the dignity of human person. But the distinction between that chapter 2 and chapter 4 is that whereas chapter 4 is justiciable, chapter 2 is not yet justiciable. And how do I mean? You cannot, on the basis of the provisions of chapter 2, go to court and say that you want these rights enforced. But you can do that clearly, and many of us have been doing it, under Chapter 4, from right to life, to right to freedom of expression, to assembly, to thought, to religion, to dignity of human person, to privacy, against discrimination, and so on and so forth. But you know what? What would have guaranteed a functional society, one in which the dignity of human person is respected and restored, is found in Chapter 2. The basic needs of man are contained in chapter 2. Right to shelter, right to health, good health, right to quality food, right to employment, right to education. Now, finally, for the common man on the street, he wants to enforce his fundamental human rights. He's been deprived and he wants to enforce his fundamental human rights, what are the things he should do? You have to be conscious of the fact that you have the right first, because if you never knew, if you're not aware, you probably will not think of means to activate it or give concrete expressions to that right. Secondly, you have to be sure, too, that besides having it, it is guaranteed in the Constitution and it's protected. I mean, you don't gloss over that. What it says is that the state cannot afford to trample with that right, no matter, how, uh, no matter how small you are in the society. And then you must have the will to now take proactive steps to ventilate those rights. What are those will? Approach uh, a lawyer, and there are so many of them in this country that have shown interest and passion for human rights cases. Even the state has made provision for the protection of the rights of the downtrodden. And that is why you have the Legal Aid Council. It's important to know what your rights are so you can know when your rights have been violated and how you can enforce your rights. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. But before we go, let's take a look at some other court stories.